Hi everybody, thanks for stopping by. Uh, so today's video I've been wanting to make for a while. I heard a conversation between two photographers um, in a video that I saw on YouTube a while ago, probably four to six months ago, where they, at some point in the conversation, were talking about photographers who photograph people on their phones and documenting life now. We're all on our phones, generally. I don't want to speak for everyone. Lots of people are on their phones almost all the time. If you go anywhere in public, you'll see somebody on a phone. If you go, if you watch TV, even the format of a lot of TV shows has progressed to the point where they will show people's texts on the side of the screen. You just kind of can't get away from it. Most things are just done with smartphones nowadays. Mo like lots of movies are made with smartphones, uh, f photo shoots, music is recorded, lots of editing, just a lot of decisions are made through smartphones and how how they interact with us and each other interacting with each other. Somebody somebody re uh, kind of connected the, the s photographing smartphones and people on them to how people would photograph people with newspapers back in the day, and it got me thinking in a pretty big way about how much I disagree with that statement. I just think that the way a newspaper can interact with a frame, a photographed frame, an image as a whole, how it interacts spatially, how it interacts, how it can hold light, how it can have light pass through, the folds of the paper, what is readable and viewable on the paper itself, they can all play with the, the situation as a whole, the story of the photo as a whole, whereas somebody having this little device in their hand that's very personal and they're looking down at it and you just see image after image after image of this, it's very unfulfilling to me to look at. There are some photos that I've seen, some of which I'll post photos of that others have taken, I have not, um, and I'm, I'm not claiming to have taken any of these photos. I'm going to show you photos of people on their phone that people have taken, photos that people have taken of people with newspapers, different capacities, and then also some photos from Jeff Mermelstein, who I think, in a sense, elevated the idea of making photos of people with their phone, and you'll see what I mean. He made a book called Hashtag NYC, and it's maybe the more interesting take on phone photography. I know there is like a, a debate with, well, if people weren't looking at their phones, they'd be looking at a book or a newspaper. And that is very true. But the information that we're being given and how much in-depth workings are happening with cookies and what you end up being fed visually um, constantly and how that is catered to you, whether it's what news you read, which yes, if you pick up a newspaper back in the day or today, you're most likely going to read the paper that suits you. So you're still selective, which makes sense, but you're not being selected and fed that. You still have a choice. It's a little harder to navigate that, especially when you're, you turn, you have your phone on, you look at it whenever, and that stuff's just already there. It's kind of like doesn't it doesn't make much sense and I know people do do this and I look for this stuff too uh, every so often where you will look you will seek out other like news outlets or you will seek out other types of information or other things that interest you or you want it that you're interested in that you want to get more information about um, and more exposure to it's just it's faster there's way more information so much information about and from people that you're never gonna see in your life and it's just a lot. It's really overwhelming. And I personally, I don't feel like I am even able to hold all that. And a book, it's either historical and it's a factual documentation of a subject, or it's fictional and you're kind of aware of what you're choosing. And a newspaper, similar. Like, sure, there's, you know, the obits, there's jobs, there's the funnies, there's sports, there's the financial section or like the business section, there's all this stuff, but you kind of pick and choose 
and it's not just being thrown in your face. There's not advertisements that you can't just like skip over. You're like kind of forced to deal with it. And I just think it's really interesting. And the way that a newspaper can play, like I said, with you can utilize that. You can move around it. You can have it work its way in to a frame. And I think it could be beautiful. Uh, another good example with, of newspapers is you could pass a house that there's newspapers all over the windows and that can add an element to that image if you photograph the house that you can't, I mean, I guess if I saw somebody had like taped smartphones all over the windows to block out light or if they were doing work to like keep the windows from getting paint on them or something or if the house is abandoned, sure I would probably photograph that. Still, no one's doing that. Newspapers on the windows of a house is has something to add to an image or just the scene you're passing or whatever. You can't really do that with smartphones. There's just, this is kind of a bad example, but there's just not the same thing at all. Like, sure, they're information, they're sources of information, they're things you can carry with you, but there is, and you'll see in some of the photos, there is a very big difference between capturing an image of someone staring at their phone or someone showing someone their phone and capturing an image of somebody holding a newspaper over their head and running through the rain or somebody sleeping covered in newspapers or a dead body in a, in a murder scene that's covered in newspapers or someone holding a paper behind their back and like waiting for something. It's just there is a different element captured in images to me anyways when somebody has a newspaper. Now, like I said, this isn't like the most important subject, but it got me thinking, I don't know, it just pops up every so often um, as a thought to ponder. And so I thought I'd make a video about it. Um, and I'm kind of curious what you would think also. Uh, have you experienced situations like this? Do you feel similarly? Do you completely disagree? I'm curious. I do feel like it is important to document current events and what people are doing and technology and like people love only photographing old cars. I kind of have been very choosy in photos that I've been making where if there's like a very new car in the image, I try to work it out of the frame because it doesn't, it's not that I want to make my images look like they're from the seventies or something. New cars just don't affect me in a way and I don't really care to document them. Other people document them, it's fine. Everyone makes photos now, um, or at least a lot more people do. I just don't feel like it's necessary for me to do that, so I cater my images to not have that in them, I guess. So yeah, I think it is important to document today. And obviously today, more people are looking at their phones than are reading papers, and why wouldn't you? But I stand by the idea that a newspaper has more to offer to a frame than a smartphone. And I would say a, a book being held by someone still adds more, but is closer to and more limiting than uh, a newspaper and closer to a smartphone and an image. Um, but even then, a book can still create a different shape. It can... pages could be opened and light could be hitting it in a certain way that it's like scatters light on the table differently. If there's like a person at a table, there's just different options and smartphones I don't feel like give that many options. Um, so yeah, please comment down below. I'm curious what you think, but I'm going to share some images now. I don't know why I'm so passionate about it, but it just is such an interesting idea and hearing the, hearing these two photographers talk about it, it just really was, I mean, obviously it's their opinion. That's great. Um, it's just baffling to me that you could, people could say that it's the same really. Um, it really is not the same to me at all. And I feel like to think it's the same would be limiting your photographic eye in a major way. Not that I make tons of photos of people with newspapers. I think I've actually only made one photo with a person with a newspaper in it on the bus. Still, I never take pictures of people on their phone. There's just no interest there. Even if the person looks a certain way, I just don't want to snap a photo of somebody on their phone. So yeah, please comment below. Thank you for watching. Here are some images. 
I'm going to be sharing, yeah, some of Jeff Vermelstein's photos of, you'll see, um, from his book, and then some other photos of other photographers, and I'll, I'll put their names down, but yeah, it's, again, I took none of these photos, I'm not claiming I did, so uh, I hope you enjoy it, and thanks for watching.